So the big question is this. How do you take $42,000 in assets in a one Trackman Bay facility in the back of a CrossFit gym and turn it into a 12 bay, 17,000 square foot training facility in just a few years? That's the question, and this is the podcast that's going to give you the answer. Welcome to Inside the Room on Stock Shot Secrets. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Stock Shot Secrets. I am with probably, I probably spend more time with you at the golf room than maybe anybody. Probably. I, I'd agree with that. Would I be your most faithful client? <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely see you the most throughout the week. Welcome with, I've got Aaron. So Aaron is a head of, or not head, he is, he is, you could almost say like head of fitness, but let's, that's really Lindsay, but like you're really, you're the fitness portion of and kind of the, the strength, the speed, everything that entitles players to hit it far, which would make you very popular. Yeah. Right. Um, and Aaron and I hang out three days a week, six days. You guys have heard me talk about Aaron a lot because um, he's basically my coach. So thanks so much, bro, for being here. You're welcome. Hey. And we should let you know, everyone know that you are a big cat dad fan. Yeah, big big cat dad. I have a uh, <laughs> mug that says "World's Greatest Cat Dad." My now wife got that for me a few years ago. Favorite gift ever. You brought so. the cat to the marriage, though. I brought the cat to the marriage. Is correct. she a cat girl? Now she is. She wasn't before, but she's now she's dogs. Yeah, I mean, most people are. Like, I'm I'm still dogs, but I'm just my cat guy. You know, I'm still a dog person. But what's the my cat's cat? name? Karen. It's Karen and Aaron. <laughs> See, you, you live with a real life Karen. Yeah, and it, the, I had named her Karen like. Two months before the Karen memes came out. Serious? This was, this was August of 2018. Um, and then like September, it was like all these Karens. So I was like, yeah, this will blow over. Uh, it did not blow over. So, But it fits perfect. She is quite a Karen. All cats are. Well, dude, thanks so much for being here. This is awesome. Yeah, for um, sure. Hanging out with you. We were supposed to go on a date tonight. Didn't work out because our my ba- our babysitters canceled, but we you know we uh, Maggie and Aaron got married a few months ago. But I love just to kind of start with just telling everybody like your story, right? Like where you're from, you know how you kind of got into the golf fitness side of things because the background didn't really. I mean, what you were a golfer, but that wasn't really like where you made your money in a sense. So yeah, I hit golf balls. I was <laughs> you're a golf ball whacker guy. Golfer. Yeah, well, whacker guy. Um, so yeah, I grew up in Sandusky, Ohio, Cedar Point, America's roller coast. How many um, times have you been to Cedar Point? Uh, since I was 13, probably like twice. But Really? Like, yeah, season ticket. I mean, passes every year until like 13. and then it But just you've becomes, only been twice? Uh, may, uh, probably two, three times. More so just with family that comes to town. Like, you want to go to Cedar Point? Like, not really. I grew up there. Traffic. Did you know that Ohio has more um, national park? Like, what are those called? In, um, amusement parks? Amusement parks than anyone? Really? It's well, because it's, yeah. it's because it's centrally located. It's eight hours within most cities of sense. driving. Seventy fives right through it. That's true. But yeah, Cedar Point is America's roller coaster. I have a lot of friends from Cincinnati, Lebanon area that say mm-hmm. like, "Oh, I'm going to Kings Island." Like that's uh, that's not an amusement. That's a that's like single A, and we're playing in the majors over <laughs> in Cedar Point. <laughs> so um, yeah, so group, you're in Sandusky. Yep. yep. Um, was an okay athlete. Not really. Um, couldn't really move very well. Was a larger larger kid, two older brothers. So I got picked on a lot growing up. Um, when I got to high school, I had to, I had to kind of make... Was that just because you liked Oreos or was that just be by you? Oh man, by I liked you Oreos. Just, you My, just genetic design. Genetic design. Um, As a young, young, a young, young, young lad. Yeah. Um, and actually my, my dad was a pastor. So the, the story that all the, all the ladies from the congregation like to tell is during his sermons and everything, when I was a kid, I would crawl <laughs> under the pews and say, do you have any candy? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times they, they would have candy. Like they would bring candy because they knew uh, Pastor so, Skit's going to be crawling under my, my feet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, two older brothers, son of a pastor, and um, pretty good athletes. Like we don't, not the highest athletic potential or anything, genetic potential. Um, so I really had to hit the weight room, learn how to um, like intrinsically motivate myself to become a better athlete. Were you always into working out? Like, like, because that, like when you were, when you were eating. Cheese Cheetos underneath the pews, like yeah. that was what 10, 11, 12. Like when 10, did 11, when did when is it that you kind of get hey like the fitness side? I'm like let me get after it. So my brothers are we're about three years apart, three four years apart. So like senior mm-hmm. freshman and then the other senior freshman. So when they when I was old enough for them to like actually beat me up, like so when you're eight nine, like they're not gonna yeah. beat you up. Like 10, 11, like they're gonna start beating you up. So yeah. right around then when I had to get big enough to kind of protect myself <laughs> and not just rely on screaming out for mom every day, uh, every time that I'm getting pushed around. Yeah. So probably about eighth grade, 
Yep. I was 13, 14 years old when I started really working out. And then yep. freshman year, broke my leg um, after freshman year football Ooh, season. That? Uh, I was hang cleaning and there was a like a wet spot on the floor. Oh, and I just slipped, tried to dump the bar forward and just landed on my leg. Yowzers. Um, but yeah, after that, I really decided, okay, I can't move much. So let's really lift. Let's work on, uh, I mean, movement patterns. At the time, I didn't really know what I was working on. But um, so freshman year of high school is when I started to really hit it. Sophomore year, I was JV player, and then junior year, I was. And what were you? What was your sport in high school? So I was my football and track. I was honestly probably a better shot putter. Uh, so you have to be pretty, pretty hefty. Got a lot of pop. Got a lot of hip pop to you. Yep. Um, but then I went to Ohio State to play football. Um, so tell us a little bit about that story. So you're shot putting in high school, mm -hmm. playing high school football. Mm -hmm. Better at track than football. Very much so. Okay. Yeah. So marginal football player yeah and then i mean my whole family my aside from my close family everyone's from columbus so yep. everyone's a huge ohio state fan yep um so, i'm a really hard worker so yep. it just so happened that my my high school football head coach jason ziggler he knew the walk-on coordinator at ohio state greg gillum got it um he said i have this guy he works really hard um, hardest work in the room, probably not. He probably didn't tell him not the most skilled guy, but I mean, people could just see that from walking around. Um, so he sends him my film. He's like, yeah, that's great. I get a call from Ohio state. I take a visit to Ohio state, sit down with urban in his office. Yep. He has no idea who I am. He's like, I'm sure your film's good or you wouldn't be here. Yep. Um, so we'd love for you to join the team. I was preferred walk on. I had offers. And it was basically for them taking, it was for almost, well, preferred walk on, but they're taking you on just culture, like mindset, yep. athleticism of like, hey, we can kind of breed this into something. Yeah, there's there's a few different like walk-ons to larger schools. And I tell people this, you you usually have to be more talented to walk on at like a Kent State or like a 1AA than an Ohio State. Just because really? those Ohio State has plenty of resources to support whoever. And they're more yep. so doing it for... Who's going to push our guys? Who's going to be best yeah. on scout team? There wasn't a guy from Northern Ohio that went to Ohio State for the two years prior. So they have to keep some sort of pipeline. This yep. guy's from direct North Central Ohio. Okay, yep. we've got Toledo and Cleveland right there. So that's kind of a draw for other Glenville kids or other Toledo yeah, Central yeah, yeah. Catholic kids, uh, Whitmer. Um, so that was the main, the, the main reason was work really hard from North Central Ohio. Um, and yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. So what? So now, so then you go to Ohio State, um, playing football, playing for Urban. What year was this? This was this was this is second year. So this would have been uh, twenty thirteen. Go going back. to fourteen. I'm trying to go back on when they got like. Were they good that first year? We, Air, Urban was there. My yeah, first year he went twelve and zero. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, the second year we lo we lose to Michigan State in the Big Ten Championship, and then we. What we do? What we do? Oh, we played Clemson in the Orange Bowl, uh, and we lose to Clemson in the Orange Bowl. I hate Clemson. Yeah, and no, then second no year Clemson national. No, that yeah. Is, yeah. So, so you're at Urban. So tell us. So, so going from like, what were some of the? Well, you know, I just got done watching. Uh, what's that show? Swampland. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what was what was it like playing for Urban? Just the culture of it, you know as a football player and then at the same time maybe even like parlaying it into what what are some of those things that like helped like where you are now yeah right like what are some of those lessons that you learned as a player so a lot of bring people it to the t bring it to tgr yeah and a lot of people don't know this about him about urban but i believe he was a psychology major so he was big into the mental side of things like break you down build you back up kind of thing like fit the co big culture huge culture now everyone's everyone's all into this idea of culture which i think kind of hit on i mean started becoming huge the past 10 15 ish years yep um so for him it was a culture of kind of being under constant stress like you're sitting in a meeting you have to be attentive because they're asking 500 questions in a 10 minute 10 minute kind of segment there yeah so it's you have to be locked in the entire time it's constant stress boom quick quick response if you don't respond quick on to the next guy um so it's and then on the practice field it's the same thing quick moving from point a to point b know where you got to be know now what you got to do why you are at our workout yeah <laughs> so it's like it, it's kind of this culture of yeah. well this practice culture of you're under constant stress yeah so then you have to kind of rely on the mechanisms that you have like 
knowing where you got to be confident to, in what you're doing yeah. like boom i'm i'm doing this stop yeah. looking confused yep like go and which is kind of what we do in the sense like for for the academy kids where we're always saying hey like you either know it or you don't know it so if i go hey like faces this path of this what's the ball flight and they're like oh, i go no, you don't know it yep right like next we always say yeah two plus two is four like you shouldn't have to think about that yep if i'm like yesterday i was going through the through a workout with one of our older better groups actually um, and I, at, do you know what this is? A, a single arm knee up, one arm dumbbell chest press. Okay. Next. Do you know what this is? <laughs> like, no, you tell me what it is. Um, and so it's a very stressful, stressful environment. So the time comes where yeah. you're in a meaningful, stressful environment and yep. you just respond and you yeah. know, you've been there. Yeah. You're going to get anxious. You're going to get nervous, but at least you are kind of constantly in that environment yeah. to, to prep for it. Yeah. Nice. So, um, was that what was? Would you say that learning that stuff from Urban was one of the main takeaways that you took out of that? Were there any other main ones that you had? I mean, it's and how real is Swamp People? Like, was that? I like, actually didn't see that. Oh, really? I mean, I lived it. Like, I, I was mean, in it Florida. Was, it was intense. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Tebow looked. I mean, I was a big Tebow fan. Yeah, he looked like a nut king. Like he was just like. Ah! I mean, and that's... Uh, oh, and Brandon Spikes. Oh yeah, I actually heard some stories about Spikes. <laughs> um. But it, Tebow came in and talked to us a few times, and then you kind of see, like, Coach Meyer, like, he doesn't look at any of us the way he looks at him. So <laughs> like, He's got the twinkle in his eye. Yeah, so, like, he was he was the, you're you're the man, you are throwing your nose in there, what was yep. it, 60, what was what do you say, 60 minutes for the rest of our lives, something like that, yeah, that yeah. halftime speech, getting after it. Um, but being under Coach Meyer, it was kind of, I mean, like I said, it's a big, big psychological game. That's why it was tough for him in the NFL. Because those aren't yeah, they're already eighteen to twenty one yeah. year old kids. What about Michigan Week? Um, oh, I, mean, I love the story that <laughs> oh, we should we should. I wish we could play the song that you said they have, but like, but what what was now. Michigan Week? Right? Because you said it was completely different than anything else. Completely, especially different. under Urban, right? Which falls in line with the culture side. Yeah. So it was a well when he got there, when Urban got there, it was we had a Michigan period. So practices were split into twenty four different five minute periods. First two periods are punt, um, and then you go on from there, but every practice every every week we'd at least you had have 24 on five, tuesday on tuesday 24 mm -hmm. five minute periods correct yeah and every five minute period was a different thing um so like to, it depends on what the the emphasis is that day tuesdays were called bloody tuesdays because that's when you actually hit it sounds worse than it is but that's just because you hit Wednesdays, it'd be like it'd be like five minutes punt five minutes fake punt yep five minutes run fake punt yeah five, five minutes you know, yeah, four three defense or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Always starting with punt, always because the punt was his baby. Punt was his mm -hmm. punt and kickoff, and that's why those two were so phenomenal under him. And they've yeah. kind of taken a step back a little bit. Um, but yeah, the first first ten minutes would usually be punt, and then if they need to, then pause the timer, and then we'll go through what we need to go through, kind of like like block practice type of thing. You um, know what's interesting to kind of interrupt what what you were saying there is that when I and I'm kind of interested to hear if his system was a thing. So when I went to I actually did a podcast on this maybe a year or two ago. I went to the Seahawks training camp, and you know we talk about it a lot in Stock Shot Secrets about like program block random compete, right? So, but I saw at least in the Seahawks thing, and I'm interested to see if it was the same way in Ohio State. Like I saw Geno Smith because it was Geno Smith and Drew, Drew Lock coming in, and Geno Smith went out and literally like here's a dude. You know, he just got twelve and a half million dollars yesterday, or twelve point yeah. seven, like guaranteed money or whatever. But like, he's literally no football, like programming his pattern. Then they would go into block practice where it would just like, and it was the same thing with like cornerbacks. It was like the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over. And like, you know, the coach would do it. Then they would go into random, which would be like there'd be a couple different th scenarios, right? But everything was different. And then it was the end was like a compete, like seven on seven. Hey, if you lose either well, at that level, it's almost like you don't have to play for anything because everyone hates losing so much. You don't have to do a consequence. But like if you look back on your days, do you see that they like because you were a long snapper when you went there, which mm -hmm. we want to get into in a little bit because it's amazing. <laughs> but was that kind of like can you see kind of a was there a framework that was simpler? I mean, maybe maybe not. But like, yeah, so it's the with any successful like you're you're starting from the bones of it. So. Like the first two periods were punt, like you said, I'm long snapper. So I didn't like see the quarterbacks. They're not going to be on the punt team. So yeah. they're overdoing their, their foot drills there. You've seen them. You've seen 
drills of quarterbacks doing like through through bags and like shuffling through keeping yeah. shoulder square flipping hips the Dak Prescott stuff that they've been doing like, for 20 years yeah so just like the fundamentals and right. then that's period one and two okay period three through seven are going to be individuals so then it's just quarterbacks going over with the quarterback coach working what you got to do seven to nine okay let's go quarterback running back like work on handoff let's work yeah. on this okay period which should be box yes box practice period nine to eleven okay now you're with the receivers fullbacks you're going to run some specific routes that we're focusing on that week yeah um 11 through 14 15 will be seven on seven so then a, a, a little, little bit more, of random a little bit more skeleton and then 17 through 21 24 however long it takes full team team on team yep. ones on two so that sounds to me like very program block random compete yep which is awesome start from the the bare the, the bare bones of it so let's talk about your ohio state snapping career yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So but you got to tell the story because it's so fun. So you're at what bowl is this? You're at? Are you are you saying when I actually when you when you went into snap? And okay, the, and so the, this was <laughs> this would have been week two, week two of my senior year, week three, two of my senior year. Um, <laughs> we have this. I mean, we got this big one on our schedule coming up. Everyone knows we're at Oklahoma. Uh, Baker Mayfield, Joe Mixon, all those guys. Um, <sighs> So I went in as a linebacker. And this is the year Baker's at Ohio State and No, this throws. this is the the year before that. Oh, okay. So in Norman. Got it. Um I back it up to freshman year. I go in as a linebacker from a smaller school, bigger, stronger, faster than everyone in high school. I get to Ohio State, smaller, slower, weaker. Yeah. So you're like this is a, <laughs> you, I can't you can, How about you snap? I can't play this game. <laughs> right. Be like a, like a 70-year-old trying to play on the tour like I just yeah. can't do it. Yep. I maximize my potential. What can I do now? Yep. So you try to find value. That's the other thing with Meyer, like <clears throat> find value somewhere. If you're not going to play, then go find something that yeah. you can do for us. Yeah. I don't care if it's water or whatever it is. <laughs> do something. Yeah. So the starting snapper, uh, we had two snappers, George McCreetis, Bryce Haynes. My freshman year, George graduated. So we had like an opening. I was like, well, I could long snap. So I went up to Bryce, asked him to teach man a long snap, talk man a long snap. So I'm the backup snapper. Which um, is like a really... In in some position, like it's kind of like, oh, you're the snapper. But I mean, that dude, like that is a really, really, really important position. I mean, you mess up that snap in the fourth quarter with three seconds left, like you're transferring schools for sure. People compared to like the guard, yeah, like which is a really important position. But I mean, the guard can't like lose the game for you. A snapper and a kicker and a holder. They can lose it pretty fast. And we saw that last year with, I mean, snap, kick, hold. Yeah. Um, you saw that, uh, like, when that Michigan-Michigan State game yep. uh, seven, pun- eight yeah, years yeah, ago yeah. with when a they, bad snap. Yeah, I two guarantee, seconds left or whatever. I guarantee you all Michigan fans know that long snapper's name. <laughs> yeah. Like, no one knows my name. The goal is that they don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're a snapper and no one knows your name, good job. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so fast forward to senior year. Uh, we have a new snapper in, Liam McCullough, who's actually the starting snapper for the Atlanta Falcons now. Yep. Um, he's the snapper, no real questions. I, I was a walk-on. He's on scholarship. They're yep. not going to he, – yeah, yeah. he's also a fa- fantastic. He's been snapping since he was four years old. Um, hey, guys, I hope you are enjoying this episode of the Stock Shot Secrets podcast. If you are enjoying it, be sure to like this episode. Be sure to subscribe so you can always see when they're coming out. And most importantly, if you would be so kind to be able to share this podcast with other passionate golfers who are trying to get better and build Stock Shots because it grows through you sharing it. Thank you so much for tuning in. And now back to Stock Shot Secrets. So back up. I'll travel to Norman. That's pretty cool. Get to see, get to watch a cool game. Yeah. Um, and I get a call from Coach Mick, Mickey Mirati, who's the head strength coach, director of strength conditioning, assistant athletic director, like the man. Awesome guy. One of the reasons I wanted to be a strength coach. Yeah. Um, but I see Coach Mix calling me on a Sunday morning. Like, uh oh. Like, I don't think Coach Mix ever called me before. I don't think he's ever texted me before. And he's calling me on a Sunday morning. <laughs> okay. Answer it. And he's like, What are you doing? I'm sitting at home. He's like, well, I got to tell you something. It's like, Okay. He's like, McCullough's sick. It's like, oh, Okay. He's like, No, he has mono. It's like, oh. He's like, We're going to need you to come in right now and we're, we're going to have a, have a little meeting. So I walk into his office and it's him and Coach Meyer sitting there. Uh huh. This is Sunday before the Saturday game. Before, yes, the Sunday before. Mm-hmm. Both of those who were sitting there waiting for me for a walk on backup long snapper, like just to talk to me, these two guys, like, yeah. oh my gosh. Um, what did I do wrong? So yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. So my class schedule is actually a little wonky my senior year because um, I already had most of my most of my classes down. So they told me I needed to get 1,000 perfect snaps in a day. Wow. So that's, that's a lot. A lot of snaps. That's a lot of hamstrings. What is that? That's probably three hours 
and this is yeah including practice so i mean i've got to go after my classes i go in at 11 o'clock and then i snap um and especially because urban's a special teams guy pun like is, he's pun like is his baby yeah like so you're like, not messing this up and we've got 12 14 different puns we've got one of the best punters in the country cam johnston back there yeah. so you gotta get him the ball he's also rolling out right so i have to shoot it out right. a yard and a half to the right and then get down the field and be a gunner yeah. um so it's it's monday we're not their team doesn't have practice on monday and they kind of are watching me snap and i mean i just had a thousand snaps the day before like my hamstrings aren't great yeah um and I didn't think anything. I was like, that wasn't a great day of snapping. Next day I come in, there's this snapping specialist there. Like they just bring in a snapping specialist for me. They overnighted him. All right, it's that bad, huh? <laughs> um, but yeah, practice that whole week. Don't really remember any of the lead up to it. Get to Norman. It's a grass field and I'm aware of this. So as a snapper, you're, you're normally snapping on turf. Yeah. So it's not muddy or wet or anything. Two hour rain delay. Oh, um, yeah, we're pulling up to the, to the field. Oh, there's this hill in Norman, like, okay, beautiful night. And then we go over this hill and there's these, yeah. clouds like yeah this is my worst nightmare yeah a muddy football snapping in a top 10 matchup night game norman oklahoma great um but it turned out i don't really remember much kind of blacked out uh, i had 13 <laughs> snaps all 13 were great um so yeah liam got mono came back two weeks later we had a bye week after that and then he came back beat me out and it was over yeah that's amazing so so now you graduate from ohio state mm -hmm. um and then what about just the journey that kind of like walks you into the fitness world? Because it didn't, well, no, it did start. You went right after Ohio State, you left and you went to Finley? Yeah, so I was exercise science major. Uh, well, health promotion, nutrition, exercise science. Was that what you wanted to go to or was Mick one of the things where you went there and you go, I actually like like what he's doing? See, I wanted, I wanted to be a physical therapist initially. Okay. Um, when I was looking at colleges, I almost went to Western Kentucky for shot put actually because they had a great physical therapy program. Uh -huh. um, but... So exercise science with the idea that I wanted to be, get into PT, uh, a few of the classes just whooped on me. <laughs> um, so I didn't necessarily have what it, what I needed to get into the, yeah. to the PT program. So I kind of switched it around. What do I love? What am I good at? What are my connections in? Strength and conditioning. Everyone knows who Mickey Marathi is. Yep. Let's work really hard and get a good reputation yeah, yeah, yeah. with him. Um, so then after my senior year, well, after first semester of uh, senior year, I interned with the all the other programs at Ohio State, at French Field House, so all yep. the Olympic sports, track, rowing, um, cheer, tennis. Uh, I actually didn't work th with the golfers. Golfers at Ohio State work on their own. Um, so I interned there and was like, okay, I think I don't want to work with football. I, I kind of yep. took it out of me. Yep. Um, so I got a graduate assistant job, University of, fin University of Finley, worked with tennis, worked with softball, worked with lacrosse, and then my second semester there they kind of wanted to add some more stuff yeah. for me so um i asked for golf because i enjoyed playing golf i actually worked at a golf course in what's Finland. your handicap my handicap now yeah it is a 5.9 is that the lowest it's been yes nice it was what was it when you started tgr when i well when i started tgr it was a i don't know i'd, I'd say it was a 10.5 you hear that right folks if you come to tgr it'll drop your handicap by 50 percent. but it's and this is actually what i tell most people is it was a 10.5 and then um, two months of being at TGR and doing the drills, I learned how to play a, a nice slice. So I learned how to play the game yeah. with that. Yeah. And then I actually went up to a 12 because uh -huh. I'm playing a different, completely different game. Yep. And then about two more months of work and you got to power through that. Like, mm -hmm. what am I even doing? I just got worse. Yeah. And then two months later, oh, I can actually play a draw, go down to a six. Now I can work short yeah. game, five, yeah, yeah. nine. Yeah. Cool. But You'll be scratched before you know it. <laughs> um, okay. So you're at Finley. Now mm -hmm. you start taking over, you're, you're getting into golf. So now is there, is there... Does that, I guess, appetite for working with golfers, does that start to, like, increase? Or, like, how's that, yeah, how's I, that working? Yeah, because I, I saw the, the, end of, like, the, the attention to detail and the individuality that Ohio State had for their – we have 105 guys on the team. Mm -hmm. You have uh, six strength coaches, but then you also have a ton of interns. So it's, like, four people a group. These people are getting individual attention. Yep. So I wanted to make it like that for, for my kids. It's tough when you're at Finley. You don't really have the resources – um, so like Chad Wagner, the head strength coach at Finley, awesome job. They do fantastic with the, what they have. Like yeah. they maximize that space incredibly well. Yep. Um, but when it's one person for about 28, 30 different golfers yeah. and you're trying to individualize it. Oh, and then I also have lacrosse. I also have, yeah. I also, I'm working with baseball and football teams, basketball, and I have tennis and softball and ba like 
got a lot of stuff going on. So it's yeah. hard for me to individualize programs for 240 different athletes that'll right. wear on you yeah. on a GA salary as well. So it's <laughs> working another job. So it, it kind of wore, wears on you a little bit, but I, that's when I realized like the, the Golf is such a an individualized sport. Feet are on the ground. Well, most of the time, hopefully, yeah, some most of the time. Yep. If you push hard enough, they're not. Um, <laughs> but so there's you take a lot of factors outside of uh, away from training the golfer. You're not running. You're not getting hit by another individual. Yeah, your feet are coming off the ground occasionally, but it's a repeated motion yep. that I can easily train in the gym if yep. I know if I know how to do it properly. Yeah. Um. So that's why after Finley, I was like, okay, I don't think that this like college profession like uh, high school is really for me i want to get more into the private training yeah um so that's when i actually came to a different place in columbus and gahanna worked with some some high school golfers some some middle school golfers kind of get my foot in the door and then once I, right, I forgot about that yeah i was just fm i was i just did the functional movement screening on them though yeah. i wasn't a tpi and then how yet. did you come across Lindsay? i knew of Lindsay, so i actually i got fitted at the golf room in 2006 16 2017 by oh, so like by mitch by one or two that's the one or two bay version um maybe it would have been 17 because i would have been in your bay there was there was at least four okay um but the left side hadn't been broken out yep yeah but mitch yeah mitch did my i went through and i tried to find when i started working there i was like what are the specs i was like mitch sent the oh mitch did my thing okay um but yeah it's i got so i knew of the place and i also knew of Lindsay like if you're a golf fitness person, especially yeah. you get into TPI and you that's what you want to do, I think you're probably going to know who it's Lindsay amazing. Becker the is. first time I went when I, in 2016, I went down to when I first started teaching, I went down to the PGA show um, and there I was, you know, like talking to I didn't know anybody. Right. So I'm going down there. I'm like, yeah, I'm opening this place with this person like this physical trainer. And they're like, who? And I'm like, Lindsay, but Lindsay Becker. And they're like, what? You're with Lindsay? And I'm like. Yeah, like you know who she is. <laughs> yeah, Lindsay's... but like she's so well known outside of um in her industry for being what for doing what she's doing. It was it was very amazing. And I was like, oh wow, like I really struck gold here. Yeah, like you at the beginning you said like head of strength, and then you kind of backtracked because Lindsay's like yeah, like she... I'm a strength and conditioning coach who yeah. has learned and adapted from Lindsay. From she's the medical side, she's the PT of. I wish I knew what yeah. she knew. She she's knows a, what she's I know. She's a rare breed in the fact that from what I understand, it's kind of like the guy who's the accountant and the financial planner. Like she understands the anatomy. Like, well, you understand the anatomy too, but she's like she's got her doctorate in like the medical side, but then she's also got the physical training side, right? Yeah. And she, like she said, like in regards of workouts, right? She kind of handles a lot of the PT stuff, does the workout stuff, but then your urban esque football side, we kind of put you in in for the the workouts for the academy and kind of and bringing that to the table. So, yeah. um, so now, so the, so you start to enter into TGR. You started in TGR in two thousand. No, you weren't here in COVID. So twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah, it would have been two. I'm going on three years, so it would have been December of 2021. Yeah, and yeah, the end of COVID ish. Yep. Um, that's how I frame everything in my timeline. Like when COVID's the COVID start. Like it's like BC or AD. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what about what is it like about like with, when you're doing working with these with the golfers that are at TGR, right? Because we have a plethora. It's it's interesting how some people have because the golf rooms. You know, obviously I'm biased because I, I own it, but like, you know, there's this idea that's like, oh, golfers like a TGR, like they're only for the professionals or like the really good players, which is like, no, nah, that's not true. Like if you're passionate about golf, like we love you. That's it. Like you can shoot 105, <clears throat> love golf. We welcome you. If you shoot 65 and you love golf, we welcome you. If you shoot 75 and you hate golf. It's like, eh, I don't really want to be with you. Yeah. Right. So it's just like those passionate players. So what are you noticing I guess when you're working with these players, right, like just the recreational amateurs, what are you finding like is the biggest issues that they have body-wise of what we're trying to do and build the stock shot? Like where are you go, man, like this is going to be hard. I mean, you're doing so many screenings. Yeah. Like, and you go, man, every dude fails this one. Yep. <laughs> right? Yep. Um, yeah, so to, to start up on that, like the screening amount. And don't that, talk about the inflexibility of my ass. I was about to say, am I, am I just using, yeah, someone. Um, my hips are so bad, people. Not, like my, is it, it well, they're both internal and external, but it's amazing that I, my rotation is what it is, but it's like, it's bad. Yeah, it's 
But anyways, um, we can always get better. One percent better. Yeah. So the value, the the, oh, the sheer volume and number of assessments I've done, I I am extremely grateful for that because it's all about experience and yeah. I've done in the since I've been here, I went through the other day. I've done three hundred and two. Yeah. Which for a two three year span, that's like it's a lot. It's a twenty year span for most of the fitness guys. Um, so with. I mean, it depends on age range, really. Yeah, but I, I you could almost because I, I was going to say that too. There's, there's basically it almost seems like there's a breaking point in, and this is a very subjective opinion. You could overrule, but it's almost like at the age of like thirty, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, like there's almost like a break. Like people who do things when they're fifteen to twenty eight, it's much different at forty two. Yep. You know what I mean. And for the people that are coming to, into the golf room, like those are the people that are saying like, okay, I'm going to get going to get better so there's there's usually like that gap from 30 to 40 where they usually think they're good enough and then they're they then they're like oh my gosh i feel like like i'm 100 so i don't necessarily see the guys like in it i'm seeing the guys like with a lot of motivation or people that are like man i I can't do anything right um but the biggest things i'd say the the pelvic tilt test that we do so if you think cat cow yoga wise cat camel cat dogs twerk yes they 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 lack their twerk skills yeah or pelvic thrust type of deal (laughs) Um, so the main thing I see with, with a lot of people that say, oh yeah, I know that like yoga, um, they just work exclusively through their upper back. So if we think about like kyphosis or the rounding of the shoulders, C posture, anything like that. And I say, okay, show me cat cow at the end. And then they show me and then they just go through their upper back and then they get nothing from their pelvis. It's amazing. Like I, by the grace of Jesus, I work on my feet in a sense, in a, like if I had to sit, I've, you know, doing paperwork, like on a Monday and Friday, like. Like when you're like this, like my neck hurts so bad. So I can imagine like if you're sitting at a desk, like how bad your posture just gets by just living. Yeah. And it's so hard. I mean, that's so hard, almost impossible to be mindful of posture. Like if you're sitting at a corporate desk all day, I mean, so it's not really their fault, but it's like, man, like you got to do something to like do it the other way. Right. And I thought it was interesting too, speaking of pelvic tilt. What you had educated me on maybe a month or two ago is how, like, the older you get, like, the more your hip, like, pulls underneath you. Yeah. And whereas, like, if you're 15, like, it's like you're sticking out and, like, your rear end is out. Whereas, like, the older we get, it's almost like we got to make sure that's where you're kind of seeing and you're going, hey, like, do you need – do you have more rotation this way or more under, right? And by and large, especially Lindsay and I did this – tackled, like, a little project to this together a a while ago is that – when players have back pain, which is like so many dudes and girls, like it's it's because of that. So it's like by seeing you, you just saved hundreds and thousands of dollars on medical bills and chiropractic bills and stretching and all this stuff yeah. just just by learning a simple thing of how to twerk. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Yeah. So and so now your dance moves are better. They're great. Yeah, I kill dance moves. <laughs> Um, but like you said, like, yeah, we're sitting here right now. Like my pelvis is underneath me. Like most people are seated. So if my pelvis is underneath me, then I'm going to have to kind of roll my shoulders forward to be, to be kind of balanced. Whereas if I'm arching my back, like we don't want to arch a a ton, but yeah, that the arch there, the anterior tilt, that's more like mobility. So think kids, like they're flimsy. Now the roll forward, the posterior tilt, that's more strength, stability and tightness. So the older you get, yeah, you've got some tightness underneath there, but the younger, you can't really control that. Right. Now, what about um, what about just in speed, right? Like, where do you see people losing in speed their gains? So with speed, I, I mean, I look at the, the, the three power tests that we do. And I this is this is sort of just a a um, I, I could totally be wrong here, but just sort of a um, a note that I've made to myself. Now, we say like vertical power for professionals directly relates to club at speed. Yeah. Like the harder you can push into the ground. Right. the better you are. Right. One thing that I found with the people that we're seeing and with the people that are coming in to try to improve their game and kind of start with lessons are that the faster the sit up and throw, the lar- the further the sit up and throw is, are, is, that will kind of tell me how fast this amateur will be. Because yep. that tells me whip, how are they engaging their core, how are they throwing their hands. Yep. Like, if you don't have sequencing, I don't really care how hard you push into the ground. If you can whip your hands and engage your core, and it's amazing how many guys they do it. And they're like, and then they don't know they don't know the timing of like the. Yep. So the further that is for an amateur, um, and again, this is just from my from my observations. Yeah. Um, those people are going to swing the club faster. Their sequencing might be off. But- I think yeah, and I think too like the the analogy that I use to to my students like on the lesson T is that. They have this idea where they watch like the Genesis Invitational this week and they're like, yeah, these guys hit it far. It doesn't look like they're swinging very far, fast and 
blah, 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 blah. And like, I need to do that. And like, they can do it, and a lot of times, like, I just did a podcast on, like, smoke or fire, like, if you're trying to fix early extension or whatever, like, that might just be an effect, and so on and so forth, but the fact of the matter is, is that, and it's kind of bad news, to be honest, is, like, you can only swing it as fast as the car will go. Yep. So it's like, these guys are like, I want to hit it farther, like, let me, I gotta find some extra speed, like, even speed sticks, which are amazing products, yep. but it's like, you can do speed sticks till you're blue in the face, but, like, if you don't get stronger, they're not going faster. Yep. You can only press the pedal down on the car, and the car can only go as fast as the horsepower that's in the car. Yep. So it's like, if you want to hit it farther, um, work out. Yeah. Like, there's an idea. You that's, know what I mean? That's one of the things that I tell. I'm. Uh, we have one golfer at the golf room, very good girl. Um, she swings, her swing speed tells me that her power test should all be like, 20 20 feet on the yeah. on the chest press 20 yeah. feet on the set up and throw 20 22 inches on maybe even more on the vertical yeah and she was at 13 13 yeah. and a half and it's like okay the engine yeah is kicking man the but chastity the, is about to break the body you've got the <laughs> engine of a maserati and the body of a honda civic like yeah. that car is going to fall apart and she struggled with knee injuries she struggled yeah. with different injuries because she's producing so much force and torque her body can't take it because she's not strong enough yeah her golf yeah. swing is incredible you got to get that body caught up. And the other, and the last part to it too is that, like a lot of times, and we try to do things in the swing and build stock shots and work on our planes and all this stuff. And it's like, man, you're trying to get depth, and it's like, bro, like your rotate, like your hip rotation, it's not good, right? So like you can do it. Lindsay always like barks at us and me and the coaches as you as you do too. It's like, yeah, they can do it in slow motion, but like throw that thing in speed and like not happening. Yep. Right. So it's it's getting you could almost make an argument where it's like the dude the guy get the player gets a new student assessment he sees you we see what it is and we go oh the fitness side like you can't do this great just go chill with Aaron for three months and then we'll start it's it's I've been telling I've been you know what I mean more like that. yes like we'll start when your body can actually do something otherwise we're just almost lighting money on fire for sure and I, I, I tell actually i don't it's not even a sales technique for me really it's more of like a well it's the truth it's not that you know we're not selling anything if that's if it's the truth right kyle's right? going to tell you to turn into your right hip more good luck show me <laughs> and then they i can't okay so you are wasting your time you're wasting your money you're wasting kyle's what? And then at that point they have a decision you either don't complain about not turning yep because you just can't or you make a decision where you go I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get better. Yep. You know what I mean? So like, let me commit to it. So then it's really about just like, what's your deeper yes? And keep trying to turn through an immobile joint and then see how you feel the next yeah. day. Well, thanks bro. So coming on, this has been awesome. Yeah. I love sure. hanging out with you. Absolutely. Um, and if anybody, you know, if you guys want to know what your body does, what it can't do, what kind of things you need to do, how much horsepower you actually have in the car, you can always go and book a, an assessment with Aaron at the golf room.com. Um, and he can build a full plan with you. There's a ton of different products that you could do in regards of group fitness or individual or whatever, but um, you got to be doing something. Yep. Doing nothing is not a good idea. Going backward. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much for uh, joining me, Aaron. Absolutely. And thanks so much, everybody, for tuning to another episode of Stock Shot Secrets. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the latest episode of Stock Shot Secrets. Now, as a listener of Stock Shot Secrets, I want to make sure that you have the opportunity to get better. So if you were to go to stockshotclub.com, I'm going to give you seven days free access where you can send us your video and we will give you personalized individual attention as to what you need to do so that you can start building stock shots. So just go to stockshotclub.com and register there. We'll give you seven days free where you can try it. And then if we like it, you can stay inside the Stock Shot Club where we can become your coach and walk with you for your entire journey. Thank you so much and be sure to go visit stockshotclub.com.